Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream, and I'm going to get a little bit of work done today, I think, maybe. I've been riding on a daydream. Pretty nice out today, as far as the sky's concerned, but the wind is picking up. We have wind advisories today. Um, we're going to have wind gusts up to 50, 55 miles an hour, so let's see what that brings. One thing you notice is my driveway is starting to look like a parking lot <laughs> of all kinds of stuff. Uh, I got my daughter's car out uh, from where it was sitting at over here and drove it a little bit for my son's car and then his van and then my truck and then Heidi when she gets her car home of course the RV and there's only two of us that have a license in here. <laughs> what a mess in here and this is what I'm going to tackle today I think. Now there's really no sense of urgency because even though today's um, high is about 42, um, which is tolerable, I mean it's not bad, uh, tomorrow's high is in the 50s, but the, again the wind is getting ready to go ballistic and it's because we're having a front come through to change our weather and we've got a cold pattern that's coming in for a little while. Um, at least. Uh, they're saying seven days, eight days, that we're going to have what would be probably considered normal temperatures uh, for February, um, but not for March. I mean, our average uh, temperature for March is what today is, um, you know, in the 40s. But we're going to be down into the 20s and uh, 30s for, I said, about seven days, and there's possibility of some snow coming in. But I have an issue, <laughs> like... Like everything else, you know, uh, it happens uh, with the truck. Uh, it just showed up the other day, and I'm not sure why, but um, it got me thinking about if I need to do repairs on this truck, what state the uh, garage is in to be, uh, you know, receiving the truck and all the parts and all the uh, stuff that comes along with uh, the modifications or uh, repairs that I need to make. The other thing is, uh, I have some kerosene I think still in this blue container let me feel oh my god it's almost full and I have kerosene in that heater so might as well run it uh, we'll get warm in here and I uh, need to straighten up back here I've been in that cabinet a few times and I've moved stuff around I've I've just made a disaster of everything uh, this thing fell over and I need to fix all this um, I need to, to order a new part maybe I'll give them a call today it's one of those things that's been on my to-do list. Uh, as far as I know, the thing still works. Maybe I'll try that out. I'll try it out and make sure it still works. But I didn't have it wired up and it fell over on the winch. And that goes in the back of the truck and it may go into the back of this truck. If uh, I want to use it to pull the water tote, that one there, um, the blue boy, fully loaded. I'm sure that thing weighs quite a bit. And if we're out boondocking, I want to be able to uh, get that in the bed of my truck so I can go dump it. Uh, that winch will allow that. And then this. A lot of this stuff has to be uh, cleaned up and put away. This was from uh, some of the stuff that I took out of my brother's pop-up that the uh, new owner didn't want. And I didn't want it to be in there. And some of it's my tools. Uh, a lot of it's probably my tools. I got tools laying out there. I have, uh, I didn't even put this away, a plastic welder. I had to do some plastic welding the other day. And it's just a disaster in here. Tools over here, stuff here. I mean, it's just really bad. And then, of course, this oven, I had intentions of cleaning it up and then putting it on a Craigslist. The uh, cover, I think I might retighten again today just just to make sure just to get it close to what I think it should be um, for this wind that's coming again so what's going on with the truck well hopefully it doesn't repeat the noise that it did uh, because I did put some snake oil in the engine uh, that in the past has always done really well for me um, when I've had this problem years ago on many older vehicles but when I started it the other day I had a definite definite lifter tick or almost a knock it was like the lifter was sticking uh, and it was persistent now it wasn't a normal tick though it was more of a knocking um, and it wasn't a big enough knock to be a rod knock or anything like that now a lifter tick 
uh, would cause a running problem because essentially one cylinder would not get the kind of pressure that was needed to open and close the valve uh, to give the engine either its full exhaust opening or its full intake opening so what happens is the RPMs would drop so the noise would happen at the exact same time the RPM would drop a couple hundred RPMs and then it would clear up the noise would go away and it did that on and off for about five minutes total and then it stopped doing it all together so my snake oil that I've used in the past when this has happened on other numerous vehicles is Marvel Mystery Oil. Uh, it used to come in a metal can that looks like lighter fluid can, an old lighter fluid can. I don't think I have any here, um, the old lighter fluid style cans. But then the uh, new Marvel Mystery Oil, it's in a plastic bottle just like everything else now, but that stuff has always worked. And it's basically what reminds me of uh, instrument lubrication oil. I, I played trumpet for many years and uh, it was like valve oil. That's what it, it, the consistency is, um, but it's always worked for me. So uh, what's that mean? Uh, it could mean that I might have to pull the uh, cam and lifters out of this thing and uh, put in a new cam and lifters, uh, which isn't a big deal. I mean, something I've done plenty of times. It's not like it's a big mystery. And the problem that I have though is wanting to go above and beyond because once that intake's off and the cam's out, um, I might want to pull the heads off and uh, replace the head gaskets, take a look at the heads, you know, clean them up. Uh, that way I can look down in the cylinders, I can see, uh, you know, what kind of um, honing is still left on the cylinder, if it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it just gives me a good idea of the engine's overall condition. However, it's a lot of work. So let me start the truck. Let's see if we got that same noise happening all over again and you guys can hear it possibly. Okay, so I got you guys setting on the battery. Unfortunately, there's going to be wind coming in from the one direction that's probably going to cause some wind noise, and then there's going to be wind from the fan running. But let's see uh, if we can pick this up real quick, and maybe I got to readjust you after I get this making a noise. Hopefully, it don't. Good. Yeah, I don't hear it. Yeah, it definitely doesn't make the noise that it did. I do have an exhaust leak starting up though on this side. Maybe I'll go ahead and shut this thing off. Yeah, I forgot about that. There's a little bit of an exhaust leak on this uh, passenger side. So with it not too hot, I can reach in there and uh, make sure all the bolts are snugged up. Uh, I'm not sure which one it would be though. Uh, it's not real bad and it does go away almost immediately. Uh, that has me thinking about getting into some different exhaust headers. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. Uh, the thing is, you know, this truck needs to be in really good shape for us to be able to tow this RV everywhere we want to go. And if we get another RV, we talked about it before, we don't know if we're going to keep this truck or if we're going to get into something different. Right now, though, this is ideal. And, man, have I invested a lot of time and effort into it. It's a really good truck, and I really like driving it. Uh, there's a lot of people that give me compliments on it, which... You know, it's a nice looking truck, but I had nothing to do with the way it looks. <laughs> you know, I just bought it that way. But I'm happy that people enjoy seeing it. Um, and I enjoy driving it. Um, I would like to do some things to it, though. But as I mentioned, uh, you know, even if I dip it in gold, it doesn't make it worth that much more money. Uh, so there's modifications that uh, we thought about doing to make the towing a little bit nicer. And then we talked about making some uh, pretty significant repairs to it uh, such as taking and putting a remanufactured long block in it uh, basically pulling the engine out and uh, spending a couple thousand dollars and putting the uh, um, 
you know, a remanufactured long block if I could find somebody reputable enough. But this engine runs so well that, you know, other than it having a problem with compression or something like that, um, I would have to check all the compression at, at all the cylinders to make sure that they are up to snuff and that they are acceptable. And if they are, then that means the basic, you know, lower short block is in pretty good shape. Um, but there's still things that could be, you know, attended to, such as uh, replacing and putting a new oil pump on it. Um, I would assume that the, uh, you know, all the rod bearings and main bearings are okay. Um, you just got to think about how stressful the engine's going to, you know, feel um, and how much you're going to put to it whenever you're towing, you know, up a grade and high elevations. Uh, it, you know, it, everything can be done, and these trucks have been doing it for many years. Uh, this engine's been, you know, powering motorhomes for many years. So it's not such a big deal, but I would just like to make sure that I address it, you know, everything that I can think of. And right now I know that the lower half is, is sounds good, runs good, but it does have 100 and, you know, 60 some thousand miles on it, 68,000, 69,000 miles on it. That's a lot of miles for a gas engine. Uh, you know, 200,000 is, you know, obtainable, but still it's, it's getting on that upper range, that upper level of what's acceptable. We also talked about pulling the transmission out and go ahead and putting in a new rebuilt transmission with a different torque converter, something that's a little bit more geared for towing than just the stock transmission. Uh, we also talked about putting a uh, under overdrive unit on there to uh, give it eight speeds instead of the four speeds that it has. Um, all those things cost money. All those things would be, you know, noticed by us. We would use it, um, but then we get back to you know the, the common sense thing of hey let's just run it and if there's a problem fix the problem so right now uh, there might be a problem with the uh, lifters I don't know that for sure the only way I'm gonna know for sure is, is leave this thing set for uh, about a week and a half and then I'm gonna fire it up and see if I can get that noise again the one thing that I will do other than uh, tightening up this uh, leaky header uh, whenever it gets a little bit nicer weather out uh, closer to May um, I will put a, a cat back exhaust system on it uh, then something other than what's factory you know the stock one in there so uh, something to look forward to um, I'll show you guys what that sounds like a before and after type thing but I've talked long enough uh, we're a little bit stir crazy or I am sitting inside the house I've got my website thing still going on they're gonna give me a call today and we got to go over some uh, changes and they're going to show me what they've done so far and uh, the whole process is moving forward uh, to where we can make that site live because our old site I haven't updated since I don't know November I mean it haven't even touched it right now I got to run over to the parts store and buy some gloves um, luckily I've got the parts store close to me now you guys know of course Heidi she manages advanced auto parts but that's a car quest and advanced auto parts owns car quest <laughs> and they own all their warehouses so it's kind of nice I get a discount when I go over there um, and a lot of the stuff that I need uh, they you know they they should have most of the small stuff if not Heidi can bring home whatever um, that I may need but yeah it's it's kind of nice I can walk over there and get most of the things all right so I'm gonna get busy cleaning here and uh, we'll pick this up in a little bit
holy cow, I didn't get much done. Um, <laughs> I posted that oven or stove or whatever on uh, Craigslist and let go and uh, Facebook Marketplace and man, the phone's just going up crazy. Plus I um, have a tendency to fix little things, uh, meaning that if I have, uh, uh, for example, that Mr. Heater, the propane tank mounted one, um, the, the sending unit the, uh, for the thermocoupler, it had come loose, so I, I fixed that. Uh, and I try to make sure that I fix everything as I go along. Plus, I had to order some parts for things that I was getting ready to put away. That's why they're out. A lot of times when I don't put stuff out, it's because I know it needs worked on or it needs attention of some kind. Um, I like my fuel pressure gauge, uh, the fuel rail adapter, the O-ring's bad in it, so I need to order one of those. So I was calling Heidi at her work and a couple other places. And then the winch um, needs a new plastic cover on it, so I was calling Warren and speaking with them. And since I got you on that subject, whenever you buy any winch parts for everybody out there that might have a Warren winch, whether it be on the front of your ATV, or on anything for that matter, anything worn related, don't do goworn.com. Don't do them. Uh, those guys are assholes out there. And I hope somebody that works there that makes a difference is watching this video because I've never heard of anybody who has advertised like their company has that they sell parts. They sell winch parts. If you type a Google search in for worn winch part, they're going to come up in the top five. Good for their SEO guys. Good for their marketing guys. Good for the the you know the people that have set up their website. So whenever somebody's looking up parts for worn winches, that their site comes up. But bad on their whole outlook and the way that they handle shit. I call them up and say, hey, I have a worn winch and I need a part. And he says, what's the part number? So I give him the part number of the winch, and he says, that's the, that's the winch? I said, yeah, that's the winch that I need the part for. He says, no, I need the part number. I don't have the ability to look up those things. So I said, uh, you need to talk to your marketing guys, because everything that is coming up on Google as far as worn and winch and parts, or worn parts, I said, your website comes up. You guys are advertising that you sell winch parts. Yeah, I do. I can get those parts, but you have to realize that I don't have a breakdown of all those winches. I said, so how can you sell parts if you don't have the parts breakdown for the winches? That's just stupid. He goes, well, sir, if you're going to continue to talk down to me, or do you want me to give you the number to, I just hung up. I mean, it's ridiculous. How could that guy even have a leg to stand on? I mean, it's just stupid. They're trying to sell parts for something they can't look up. That, that's, I can't even begin to begin, you know, wrap my head around it. And this is because working at Summit Racing uh, for all the years and a couple other places that we sold parts. And, of course, working at AutoZone when I was younger. And, of course, Heidi working at Advanced Auto Parts for the last 20 years. Can you imagine if you came into the parts store and asked for the part and say, you know, I don't have the breakdown of that part and it being a cornerstone of your business, one that is actually in the name of your business. I mean, if I had GoFordTruckParts.com and you called me up for a Ford truck part and I said, well, I need the part number because I can't look up that part, <laughs> I, I would expect you to laugh and hang up. So you guys just avoid them. There's other people out there. Um, I spoke with Warren directly and those guys are very nice out there. Uh, I spoke with Myron, I believe his name was, very helpful and he was a little alarmed that there was a company out there, um, which is, a, I guess, a spinoff of four-wheel parts, uh, four-wheel parts or four-wheel four drive parts, something like that. And uh, he, he couldn't believe that was being done. So, yeah, that, that's pretty shitty. Uh, like I said, I posted the uh, stove oven on there, and I've got, like, six Facebook messages. I've got two Craigslist responses, and I've got two let-go responses. And people, please. If you're shopping online, do everybody a favor and read everything that's posted in the description. I mean, it's so simple. I mean, I know that we're in a picture-based society and everybody's looking at the picture, but come on, first of all, everybody says, is this item still available? 
even though all three of those locations can tell you how many days that that was posted. If it's going to be sold, I'm pulling it down. I know there's people that post ads on Craigslist and let go on Facebook Marketplace that don't pull down their items once they're sold. I'm not one of those. And I know you have no idea about that, but don't ask if it's available. I mean, just ask questions about it. What's wrong with it? Whatever. And even then, read the description first. If I've got to tell one more person where I'm located at, even though it's in the heading, I mean, that's ridiculous. Okay, this is the uh, website, people. i got to get off here and go to work. Holy cow, is this wind crazy. I'm going to try to stay blocked here. You guys can listen to it. See the trees waving in the wind. Can you imagine if they had a bunch of leaves on them? There's one tree that's been laying on top of that house for a while. But yeah, this is uh, some pretty strong gust that we've got. Of course, this is before the uh, cold comes in. It'll be cold tomorrow. Well, we got uh, the oven sold. It went right away. That didn't take long, but man, is this wind crazy. <laughs> the flag's just hanging on, and the leaves are filling in my garage, even though I cleaned it out. I, I can't believe it. Holy cow, it's trying to take my grill cover off. I've never seen that before. It's wild. I know there's a lot of wind out here, but I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. pretty wild I've never seen it do that before look we got flowers that are trying to bloom poor little flowers little do they know that a storm's coming and it's gonna cover them up with snow <laughs> oh well but yeah I'm kind of in a dead spot here for the wind man I can't believe it I mean I've seen wind like this before but it's uh, doesn't seem that it's quite the season for this so I have my plastic welder out again. I hate plastic welding. It never works the way that you think it does. So if you're thinking about buying one, eh, maybe not. <laughs> it's uh, It makes it ugly. I mean, I could clean this up and, you know, do things with it. JB Weld, whatever, make it look a lot nicer. Um, I'm missing some pieces, though, so I'm going to go see if I can find those pieces. If not, I'll just kind of doctor it up and make it look a little bit better. Um, this goes in the back of the truck, and then, of course, this co covers everything. And uh, I did a video on this on my other channel. Um, this is kind of a heavy-duty rail that's on here. I mean, it's, it's heavy. It's, it's not light at all. And, uh, of course, mounted the winch, and then that way, um, whenever I winch stuff up in the back of the truck you know it'll pull so they say 1700 pounds well I'll tell you that I have completely bottomed this thing out to where the uh, relays have shut off because it's been too much of a load and I've pulled some heavy stuff I mean really heavy stuff that shed that we had at the side of the house I pulled that up on a guy's trailer I don't know if I ever did a video of that for you guys I, I believe that I did but we did get it up on his truck, and uh, this little winch did it. Mounted on the bed rails. Can you believe that? So that's what I'm going to finish up. And uh, for the most part, everything's kind of straightened up. Not this. This is never straightened up. It needs more attention than I can give it right now. But I was glad that we sold the uh, stove. Uh, Heidi was happy. Uh, the guys that got it were real happy. He said it's for his man cave. Uh, apparently he has uh, a man cave down in his basement. And he likes to cook. <laughs> he said, this is going down in my basement. He says, so I can hang out and not have to run up and down stairs every time I want something. Which, I understand that entirely. So, this is me closing out the video. And as always, guys, I hope to see you out there. Bye.